let's take a look at the toy shop activity. Each gray band, um, their, their goal looks a little bit different, but essentially each pair of students is going to take a small handful of fidget toys out of the bag. And at their seat, they're going to work on counting their collection of toys and representing it pictorially on their whiteboard. So here, let's say this was my collection. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight toys. So students may count all of them and then represent by drawing eight of their toys. Now it's okay if, if students don't draw it exactly how the toy looks. You can encourage students to use dots or X's or tallies um, to represent their toys as they're drawing it pictorially. Some students may need to practice that one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning as they count one toy, they make a mark on their whiteboard. So one, two. They may need to perform the action that way. But what we want them to do is as they arrive at the end of their count, we want them to recognize that the number, the last number they said when they were counting is the total number of objects in the collection. For example, the total number of objects in my collection was eight. So my picture, my physical collection, and the number I write should all represent my collection. Once they work with their partner, you're going to group two partnerships together. So there's a larger collection to count and they're going to repeat that same process. Um, when they're done, you'll bring the entire class together to count the entire collection as a group. Now, as you begin counting the collection, I want you to make a purposeful mistake accidentally lose count or move two objects and count at once, make some sort of mistake so that the students recognize, hey, wait, 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 that's not right. That gives you the opportunity to emphasize a need for structure when we are counting. Now, students may suggest grouping objects into groups of two, five, or 10 in order to organize their count. But what we can do then as a class is organize all the objects into groups and then count the groups to find the total number of objects in our collection. For the older students, you're going to pass out a pricing list for the different toys. Now there is pricing list A for second and third grade and pricing list B for fourth and fifth grade. They have different values on them. What students are going to do is they're going to take the objects in their collection, figure out the wholesale cost that they would have to pay to get that toy into their store, and then calculate the retail cost to figure out how much money they could earn by selling them. Students can then calculate the profit they would earn for their toy store if they sold all of the objects in their shop. 